I'm going to call next on, on the two institutions that started this. Uh, or the presidents of those two institutions. I'm going to do that in alphabetical order. <laughs> um, so Tom Ro our next speaker will be Tom Rosenbaum from Caltech. Thank you, Stan. Uh, you know, I was hoping that uh, there was more meaning in this profound evening to the water, but, but I but I take your point. Uh, we'll start by uh, joining France and thanking uh, Barry and Kip and Ray for their generosity in including us. Uh, last night, uh, Kathy and I uh, were seated just adjoining the uh, king's seat, the royal box. And when the king came in and the whole company, um, Kathy, uh, let me know that I really should appreciate the fact that we were next to royalty. And I thought about this. I thought this incredible ceremony and how true it was. Here I was, three rows right behind Kip Thorne. Of course, as uh, all, all the laureates have reminded us that Although this is an extraordinary Nobel Prize, it has really let us interrogate nature in different ways. It has revealed the violent universe in its full blazing glory. Uh, it's a group effort. And of course, this dinner testifies to the fact of how many people it has taken to make these discoveries. Um, and I think Kim put it that uh, we should think of them as icons. So I thought of the great iconographer, uh, Erwin Panofsky, who when he was asked, how could he always create these perfectly ordered critiques, admitted that what he did was he'd bend the nail until he could hit it flat on the head. <laughs> and uh, there have been a lot of exquisitely bent nails over these four decades. It's really a testament, I think, to human ingenuity in this fashion. Uh, yet, uh, of course, uh, as modest as the three laureates are, uh, they really have played a very special role in this. And what I really like about this prize is it captures the different elements that you need to do great science. And this, I think, is a lesson that goes well beyond this physics prize, but is rarely demonstrated in this fashion. And you see that the combination of the insightful theorist with an element of evangelist, Kip Thorne, you have the consummate experimentalist who wants everything perfect, but yet has a mixture of the maverick, Ray Weiss, and you have the man who brought this together when it became big science, when it required the talents of so many people to realize a vision, a resolute realist, uh, Barry Marish. And we see what can happen when you bring together people with these kinds of skills. You also see um, that they shared a vision even with these skills of belief that an important enough problem was worth spending this time doing, whether it worked or not. The persistence that was required uh, to be able to do this. And the uh, beauty of discovery, I think, shown through in their talks and in all the reports that have gone uh, of all the LIGO discoveries. Uh, there are also institutions, of course, uh, that have been involved in many of them. Caltech, uh, if I may take a parochial view, <laughs> just for a second, was there from the very beginning when others weren't willing to play and to invest. Um, and we'll be there 100 years from now, I'll tell you that, in terms of support of this field. Uh, but we've shared an incredible partnership with MIT, and that's been a long-lasting and rewarding one. I think for both institutions. And then, of course, the whole LIGO scientific collaboration. Without that, we could not have gotten where we were going to want to get. Uh, 
as is as France so nicely put it as well, um, although perhaps too modestly, this is also a demonstration of government support that I think is really unrivaled. Uh, this is an example of public policy writ large for the good of humanity in a way that absorbs risk, which is something that we don't do well as a society. And I hope this will be an example as we move forward for future such investments. And we have the trajectory in that corner all the way over its history from Walter to France. And for that, we're very grateful, all of us as scientists. Uh, so I wanted to end with a quote from uh, Pablo Picasso, who, talking about his art, um, said that there's some painters who transform the sun into a yellow spot. But then there are others who, through their art and their intelligence, transform a yellow spot into the sun. And I have no doubt that with science and art and intelligence, we will be creating many sons in the decades and centuries to come. Thank you so much.